The story began with a half-horned monster woman walking alone in the snow. Many monsters behind her were watching her. The scene moved into the plane, and a woman with horns wanted to shower and swam into the sea. Then the professor detained her because he was also told by the person in charge of Parasite named Nana that there was no sea in Plantation 13. But the horned woman persisted in her will. The scene switched to a man named Hiro lying in the forest. He was then contacted by his friend Ichigo who told him to attend the welcoming ceremony tomorrow. Shortly after that, he heard what seemed to be someone crashing into a nearby glass wall. He approached the source of the sound and found a bleeding bird. The bird tried to fly again towards the forest. Hiro looked up at the sky. He saw the plane the horned one was on, which would then land at the base. Later at a dormitory, Hiro's friends talked about the arrival of a pair of killers, the horned lady and her partner. Then a man named Goro asked Ichigo about Hiro running away. The plane had just landed. On the plane were a professor and his partner, the injured horned woman. They headed straight into a room. While on the way, the professor talked to manager Nana. Then he squeezed her ass because she was being too stiff to him. After that, they entered a room where the professor and Nana talked about the trial training with the students. They realized that the horned woman was not with them. Then the professor pointed at the horned woman who entered another room. The scene switched to Hiro, who followed the injured bird into the forest. While walking, Hiro came across a lake, and he saw a woman's clothes were loose. He took the clothes and held the woman's panties. Hiro looked at the lake, and a naked horned woman was swimming. Hiro closed his eyes, and when he looked again, the woman was not there. Hiro, who thought the woman was drowning, rushed into the lake to save her. Then suddenly, the woman appeared in front of him. Hiro was surprised to see her. Hiro explained why he approached her. Hiro told the woman to wear her clothes first. The horned woman said that Hiro was a pervert. Hiro, who had just realized that he had been holding the woman's panties, immediately returned them to the woman. The woman laughed and also thanked Hiro for intending to help her. Then she put her clothes back on. The woman asked about Hiro. He explained that he failed to become a parasite pilot. Then the woman went over her words and licked Hiro's cheek. Surprise, Hiro fell to the ground, and the woman was above him. She offered Hiro to be her darling or partner, and she would make Hiro develop his powers. She then reached out her hand to Hiro. When Hiro took her hand, the Zero Two female partner found them. They brought back the horned woman and told Hiro to stay away from her. Then Hiro asked the woman what her name was. The horned woman replied that she didn't have a name, but her nickname was Zero Two. Hiro was brought back too by the guards there, and he accidentally saw the bird he was chasing had died. The next day the welcoming ceremony began. All of Hiro's friends were present, but only Hiro and his partner were absent. At the same time, Hiro was in a room with someone. Hiro told the man that he wanted to return to his orphanage because he felt he had failed. After leaving the room, he saw his partner, who looked sad. Then there was a flashback scene where Hiro and his partner Naomi were undergoing a test. But in the process of unification, they both failed. The story continued. Hiro and Naomi were in a tower where they would go home. Naomi realized Hiro's overbearing behavior, and Naomi regretted why she had to be Hiro's partner. Meanwhile, elsewhere his friends were getting ready for the trout and wondering where Hiro had gone. In the tower, Naomi walked towards the plane or some capsule vehicle. Behind her, Hiro followed her then Naomi stopped. She suddenly threw his briefcase at Hiro, which made him fell. Naomi wanted Hiro to stay there and not return to the orphanage. Naomi then bid farewell to Hiro. On the other hand, Zero Two sensed the presence of an upcoming monster or Klaxosaur. Moving on to Hiro's friends, they had all boarded a giant robot or Franks and were about to undergo a warm-up ritual. But when the gate was open, the fog covered their area. Hiro was about to enter his plane. But he was discouraged and wanted to say something to the officer behind him. Then a big earthquake occurred and cut off the conversation between them. From the ground emerged a very large Klaxosaur. The Klaxosaur destroyed the plane on which Naomi was riding. The plantation defense immediately attacked the Klaxosaur. The monster knocked down the tower where Hiro was there and made Hiro fell from the tower. Hiro immediately ran away from there. As he ran, he saw Frank Strelizia was tearing the monster's body apart, but Klaxosaur was not standing still. It opened its tail to be used as a weapon. Franks then immediately moved away from the monster. 
Then the monster gathered its energy and shot its power at Franks. Franks managed to split the energy released by the Claxosaur, but Franks was thrown and fell, almost hitting Hero. One of the Franks pilots ejected and died, and only Zero Two survived. Hero, who saw this, was worried that Zero Two was dragging the Franks alone. He then ventured to use the Franks with her. Zero Two, at that time, felt a resemblance between her and Hero. This made Zero Two's heart pound fast. Then she stretched out her hand and pulled Hero into the Franks. She said Hero would be her darling. Just then, Zero Two kissed Hero's lips and hugged him. They accidentally created a great power that affected the Franks. Outside, the Claxosaur moved again and attacked the Franks. But the Franks transformed into a humanoid form. Then the Claxosaur was picked up and thrown away by Franks. The professor was surprised to see the massive change. Then the professor explained why it could happen. Soon the Claxosaur got back up and was about to strike back, but Franks used its weapon, took out a spear, and stabbed into the core of the Claxosaur. After that, a force of energy shot out, and the Claxosaur was destroyed. The next day, the warm-up ritual began because it was delayed by the monster attack yesterday. Hiro could only look down at his friends piloting their franks. The scene continued. Hiro was visiting the grave of the bird he followed yesterday, and after that, he returned to the dormitory. Ichigo had been waiting for Hiro's arrival in front of the dorm while playing with the cat. Hiro then greeted and told Ichigo not to wait for him at the front. Ichigo replied that she was worried about Hiro's condition. Then Gora told them to go inside the dormitory. Inside was Zero Two, who was busy eating. The girls there were busy gossiping about Zero Two. Then one of the boys tried to get Zero Two's attention. Then Zero Two approached Hiro and sat next to him. Hiro inquired about him successfully piloting the Franks, and Zero Two called him Darling. His friends needed clarification on what Darling was. Then Nana came and introduced herself and called Zero Two to come back. Hiro asked Zero Two to pilot the Franks together again, but Nana told him that only her superiors could allow it. After that, Zero Two and Nana got on the elevator. Nana asked Zero Two not to act on her own and avoided Hiro, as Zero Two was difficult to deal with. Soon an announcement said that a monster or Kyoryu had appeared in Plantation 13, and Frank Strelizia was allowed to face the enemy. Then the AP officials discussed Zero Two and Hiro, who had successfully piloted the Franks yesterday. Hiro and his friends were changing their clothes in the locker room. Goro complimented Hiro on choosing the Franks. One of his friends didn't accept it because Hiro was a coward. Meanwhile, a girl named Miku's smooth buttocks was seen wearing her underwear in the girl's locker room. She felt her friend's stomach. Ichigo just kept quiet and put on her pilot suit. Ichigo at that time looked unhappy, and then she pointed at the wall until Miku became silent, and Ichigo went outside. After that, they boarded their respective Franks except for Hiro. They were getting ready to start their training and trusted each other as partners. At the same time, Hiro could only see his friends. He was practicing piloting a small robot and would love to be able to pilot Strelizia with Zero Two. While running with his small robot, Zero Two appeared after Hiro had left. At the Franks at base, Zero Two met Ichigo and her partner, Goro. Ichigo asked why Hiro had to be with her and she told Zero Two to stay away from Hiro. Zero Two asked Ichigo who she was to Hiro. Then she licked Ichigo's cheek and then left. Then, at the dormitory, Hiro's three friends, namely Futashi, Zorom, and Mitsuru, were talking about Hiro. Zorom, who at that time didn't admit that Hiro was superior to him. Not long after, by chance, Hiro appeared and Zero Two kicked the ball toward Hiro, and it hit Zorom, who was taunting Hiro until he didn't accept it. A commotion then happened there. After that, Ichigo received a message from Nana about a sparing match with Franks. Then soon, they were gathered in a room, and they told Hiro to choose his partner to pilot the Franks. Of course, Hiro chose Zero Two because Zero Two also wanted to be his partner. But Ichigo refused and told Hiro to partner with her because Zero Two was not a member of the troops. Then Nana agreed, and Zero Two approached Ichigo, and she told Ichigo that she wanted to see the results. Zorom bravely nominated himself to be his opponent. Later at night, at the dormitory, Goro cheered on Hiro because it was a chance to prove his prowess. 
In the arena, Ichigo and Hiro got ready to pilot the Franks, and Ichigo was very confident that she could pilot the Franks with Hiro. Then both of their Franks were active, and Hiro and Ichigo wanted to attack Zoron's Frank Kex. When about to attack, Hiro's Franks and Ichigo was deactivated. Then she asked to wait three minutes. Ichigo tried to move it but couldn't. Then Ichigo told Hiro to remember what made Hiro pilot the Franks before succeeded. He remembered his kiss with Zero Two. Ichigo shyly kissed Hiro while Zerome and his Franks was waiting. Ichigo was still kissing Hiro, but Hiro didn't feel anything. Then Zerome's Franks attacked Hiro and Ichigo's Franks. When Zerome wanted to attack again, his Franks was deactivated and fell on Hiro and Ichigo's Franks. Ichigo, who was very disappointed with Hiro, piloted the Franks alone. Then she picked up the Zerome's Franks and smashed it into the wall, knocking the two Franks down. Zero Two, who saw that, smiled and left. The flashback scene went back to Hiro's childhood, who was getting names to his friends. One of them was Ichigo and Hiro, who were being checked for stability. Back to the present, Hiro left his room and met Ichigo, who was waiting for her turn to be examined. Hiro wanted to say something, but Ichigo was called into the room. On the other hand, Nana and her partner Hachi talked about Hiro being fit to pilot Strelizia even though he was unconscious. He mentioned that Hiro was a special species. The scene cut to Goro and Hiro, who were talking about him meeting Ichigo. Ichigo looked angry earlier, and Hiro left a message for Ichigo to Goro. Goro asked what he would do now and answered that he would pilot Strelizia with Zero Two. Then Goro advised Hiro that there were terrible rumors about Zero Two's partner. If someone becomes his partner more than three times, he would die. But Hiro didn't believe that. Later in the afternoon, at the dorm, Hiro's friends talked about the possibility of Hiro being a member of the Parasite. Then Miku chimed in and offended Goro. Then Ichigo arrived and questioned Miku's words. Miku explained that she believed in Hiro. Then she saw Hiro was practicing using a small robot and being observed by Zero Two. After finishing, Hiro found Zero Two, who had fallen asleep waiting for him. Then Zero Two took Hiro to a place he had never been to, namely the lower city of Plantation 13. Hiro looked at Zero Two to think of a name for her. Then Zero Two jumped onto an iron bar and walked over it. She invited Hiro to run away with her. Elsewhere, the parasites were gathered to defeat the undersized Toryu in the mine. Nana said that Strelizia would not be used in that mission. It made Hiro sad. Hiro could only see his friends dragging the Franks. But Mitsuru and his partner, Ikuno, would not run Franks. Moved to the mine, and the three Franks had reached the mine and gone inside. They searched for Kyoryu's whereabouts. While at headquarters, Nana called Mitsuru and Ikuno back. Ichigo reported having found the Kyoryu. The three of them immediately attacked Kyoryu repeatedly. At headquarters, Hiro looked happy, but that was nothing Zero Two said. Zero Two would not underestimate the Kyoryu. Then the Kyoryu counterattacked Zerome so that Miko fainted and their Franks became deactivated. One by one, the Kyoryu increased in number, and inevitably the three of them had to retreat. Back at headquarters, Zero Two had told Nana to use Strelizia, and Hiro wanted to pilot it too. But Hachi forbid it, and Mitsuru confidently nominated himself as Strelizia's temporary pilot partner. At that time, Nana asked Zero Two to drive Strelizia with Mitsuru. Hiro, who heard that, was very disappointed. He didn't want to let Zero Two be with Mitsuru. When Mitsuru crossed paths with Hiro, he bragged about himself, and finally Strelizia was launched. Mikey finally woke up inside the mine, and Zerome activated their Franks again. Not long after that, the three of them fled. But unfortunately, they were caught between the many Kyoryu, but luckily, Strelizia came on time to defeat the huge Kyoryu, which almost devoured Ichigo's Franks. Then the three of them were ordered to stand down, and Strelizia would take care of everything. Mitsuru was very proud that he could drive better than Hiro. Hiro, who heard that invited Mitsuru to a more serious match. At headquarters, Nana told Zero Two to stop, but she didn't care. Then Nana took Strelizia by force. 
Aboard the mine, the three Francus's pilots survived, and soon the ropes were lifting the dead Strelizia. Soon Zero Two came out waving her hand to Hero. Meanwhile, in Strelizia, Mitsuru was unconscious and had a lot of injuries. Then one of the AP officials reported about Kiryu's increasing activity. They talked about being unable to keep Strelizia quiet all the time because there was already an extraordinarily confirmed specimen Hero. Moving to the hospital, there was Mitsuru who locked himself up and looked very scared. Then Hiro asked what happened to Zero Two, and he grabbed Hiro towards him. His friends laid down Mitsuru, who was so miserable. Continuing outside the room, Ichigo approached Hiro, who was alone. She asked about his wish to pair up with Zero Two, which took a victim like Mitsuru. But Hiro still chuckled at his will. Ichigo couldn't do anything and left Hiro. Elsewhere, Zero Two was being reprimanded by Nana and Hachi for what she did yesterday, which almost killed Mitsuru. Zero Two didn't seem to care as long as she could have her darling. It was doubtful that Hiro would be permitted to pilot the Strelizia, and Nana said the Zero Two would be returned to the front row. Hiro was seen practicing using a small robot. Suddenly, Hiro remembered the rumors about Zero Two, which annoyed him. At the dorm, his friends talked about Hiro, who was training hard, and Ichigo discussed his desire to be a pilot with Zero Two. Because if he wasn't there, they all wouldn't be able to survive. Zero Two was looking at Streliza when Hiro walked to see Zero Two. Seeing Zero Two, he hid reflexes because of the Mitsuru incident. After that, Hiro soaked in the bath, and Zero Two appeared behind Hiro. She immediately cornered Hiro and said to run away from this place, and asked a few questions. Then the alarm sounded, indicating the appearance of Kyoryu. In the infirmary, Mitsuru forced himself to pilot the Franks. Another Franks was then launched, except for Hiro and Zero Two. Then there was one plane outside that had just landed with the troops. On the battlefield, the four Franks worked together so that Kiryu fell, but they did not find the point. Not long after, Miku and Mitsuru's Franks were pinched from behind by Kiryu, but they were attacked when the others were about to help them too. At headquarters, Zero Two noticed that a plane had just landed. Soon several troops entered to pick up Zero Two. She then said goodbye to Hiro. Nana told Hiro that it was Papa's order or their boss. Strelizia was also brought on board. Hiro, who remembered Zero Two's words, immediately ran after her. Hiro then called Zero Two behind a door he could not enter. Then Hiro said the words that made Zero Two come back with him again. Zero Two immediately fought the two guards, approached Hiro, and told Hiro to say that again. Hiro looked shy and said he wanted to drive Strelizia with her again. Then Zero Two immediately took him to Strelizia's place on the plane. They broke through the gate and the troops. Once there, they confidently used Strelizia. They got off the plane and headed for their friends. When they arrived, his friends were surprised to see Hiro driving the Strelizia again. Strelizia planned to take care of one Kyoryu, and the four others would take care of the other. When Strelizia wanted to attack the monster, it dived into the ground, and Strelizia followed it into the ground. They lifted Kyoryu's entire body, which turned out to be their bodies joined together. The four Franks tried to hold back the monster's mouth parts. Strelizia quickly shot and headed for Kyoryu's body, and they crushed it from the inside. They also destroyed the core of the Kyoryu. Then at the base, Hachi ordered the Franks pilots to return and analyzed Hiro and Strelizia. At night, Plantations 13 and 26 carried out the kissing process, namely the fuel transfer between plantations. The parasites were watching the process from inside the building. The next day, they attended a big ceremony with troops of Franks Plantation 13 and 26, which excited them. The next day at the dormitory, Gora was getting ready and woke up Hiro, who was asleep. When he touched him, he was shocked because Hiro's temperature was very high. Then they both talked, and Hiro hid his pain. At that time, they gathered in the living room and discussed yesterday's ceremony. One of Hiro's friends, Kokoro, asked how he was after dragging Strelizia, and soon Mitsuru left the room. The clock showed breakfast time, and Hiro and Ichigo walked later. Hiro was surprised Ichigo held onto his shirt and then tidied it up. Ichigo complimented Hiro on yesterday's fight. Upon entering the dining room, Zero Two greeted Hiro, pulled him to the dining table, and shoved food into his mouth. Ichigo just seemed speechless. After that, Hiro and Zero Two spent time together. 
Elsewhere, Ichigo was talking to Nana about Zero Two who lived with them in the dorm. Then she left the room, and there was Gora waiting for her, and they both went back to the dorm and talked about Hiro's behavior recently. In the garden, Mitsuru was seen taking medicine secretly and feeling sick. Kokoro met him, and she offered to help him, but Mitsuru was not happy with that and left Kokoro. Later in the dorm, Ichigo was preparing for Zero Two's room, and she discussed Hiro not being hers. Then the scene switched to Hiro, who looked pale, looking at himself and holding his chest. Goro and his friends were walking around looking at Franks. The squad from Plantation 26 asked about Hiro because he was popular among the troops. After that Goro returned to his room and found Hiro lying on the floor. Nana and Heichi examined Hiro's blood cells which were affected by a rejection reaction to Zero Two. In the room, Goro helped Hiro and he was surprised to see Hiro's chest, which looked like it had a disease. He forbade him to pilot the Strelizia again, but Hiro persisted. Hachi gathered Plantation's 13 and 26 troops and discussed Kiryu, who would attack their two plantations. Hachi ordered both armies to guard the plantation and their mainstay was Strelizia. But the Plantation 26 troops refused to work with Strelizia. Nana comes with Zero Two and Hiro. One of the Plantation 26 troops protested against Zero's fighting style two years ago, which was reckless and took her boyfriend's life. Zero Two didn't seem to care and Hiro still believed and said that he was the one who would take care of Zero Two. After that, Hiro winced in pain and Goro couldn't sleep because he was worried about him. Then he left the room and saw Ichigo and Zero Two walking into the forest. Arriving there, Ichigo ordered Zero Two not to force Hiro on his mission later. But Zero Two felt not sorry because Hiro was her darling and he wanted to be her partner. There was an answer from Zero Two, which annoyed Ichigo, then slapped Zero Two. Zero Two's eyes and horns turned red. Then the rain fell on them both. Ichigo returned to the dormitory and Goro, waiting for her, gave her a towel. Ichigo told Goro that she couldn't do anything and couldn't stop Hiro with his will. Ichigo was crying and hated all this. The next morning, Hiro ran into Zero Two at the first lake they met, and she opened Hiro's clothes and noticed an infection in his chest. Zero Two said no partner could pair with her more than three times. Then Hiro agreed and still wanted to pilot the Franks with her. Zero Two laughed and danced at Hiro's words. The next day, the Kyoryu were already walking towards the plantation, and the troops were waiting for the attack time. The troops got ready and walked towards the Franks. Ichigo asked Goro about Hiro, and he told Ichigo to meet him. At the same time, Hiro came behind her and Goro pushed Ichigo towards Hiro and left them alone. They chatted encouragingly with one another. Not long after Zero Two left the changing room, Hiro immediately approached her. Once all troops were ready, the five Franks and Franks Plantation 26 troops were launched and occupied their respective positions. On the front line, Kyoryu was getting closer then quickly, and the 26th troop defeated it. While in the back row, Ichigo and her friends were also facing Kyoryu. On the other hand, Futoshi was overwhelmed by Kyoryu, but they compactly beat the monster. In another position, Hiro looked like he was in pain from his infection while the big Kyoryu was approaching. Then Zero Two saw that the two troops were biased, and she activated Strelizia. She immediately helped both armies defeated the Kyoryu. But after that, Strelizia was temporarily deactivated because Hiro seemed to be in pain because the infection had spread. But it didn't stop there, Hiro got up again, but Ichigo told him to step back. Then huge Kyoryu approached and was attacked by the Plantation 26 troops. At that time, they thought they had succeeded. But the Kyoryu transformed into a stronger one, and Ichigo devised the ultimate strategy for Strelizia. They opened an opening for Strelizia. Then they grabbed the giant monster's lay and blew it up. Strelizia quickly shot and thrust its spear into the monster's left body. Instantly, Hiro fainted, and the attack was unsuccessful. The monster threw Strelizia away. Then Strelizia tried to get up, but Kyoryu joined its hands to become a battering ram. Kyoryu then hit Strelizia until it bounced off the plantation wall. Strelizia kept getting hit by Kyoryu's attacks which made Ichigo felt sorry for herself. Then moving into Hiro's subconscious, he met Naomi and Zero Two. After that, he woke up and saw Zero Two bleeding and struggling to get up. While Hiro just laid down and didn't move because the infection had spread too severely. Then he remembered Zero Two's words and wished as soon as the infection in Hiro's body disappeared, and he immediately hugged Zero Two who was out of control. Then a bright light from Strelizia brought things back together with the monster. Her friends immediately opened an opening for Strelizia to attack the Kyoryu's core, 
And finally, the Kiryu was immediately destroyed. After that, Hiro found another reason to pilot the Franks, to become a wing for Zero Two. They both came out as Trelizia, and his friends were surprised to see Hiro, who was still alive. Then they all approached Hiro. The scene switched to Hiro and his friends who were having a recreation on the beach. Goro was focused on Ichigo, who was wearing a bikini. Meanwhile, Hiro was alone with Zero Two. Ichigo was happy to see them. At the headquarters, ape officials discussed yesterday's fight, and they would oversee Zero Two. The story went back a little to Hiro and Zero Two, where Professor Franks met with Haki, Nana, and a member of Parasite. Hachi informed Zero Two that they were moving to Plantation 13 and were officially a couple. Then back at the beach, Zerome and Futoshi looked at Maiku's smooth buttocks. Then Goro appeared beside them and would not pass by the beautiful sight either. Hiro was seen following Zero Two swimming. He was amazed to see Zero Two's curvy body. Zero Two went straight to Hiro, held the wound on his chest, and licked his cheek. Zero Two asked Hiro about something related to kissing but he was quickly pulled by Futoshi, Zorome, and Goro. Then he was carried ashore, and Zorome asked him what a kiss was, and Hiro was forced to answer. Hiro also explained that Zorome was curious and wanted to try it with Hiro. Ichigo ran up to them, and she was embarrassed when Futoshi asked about the kiss. Then Miku and Kokoro called and asked them to go to a hidden place. They explored the place until they found a ruined city. They looked into the house that had been abandoned for a long time, and when Ichigo was walking, she saw a poster of a couple kissing. Ichigo immediately remembered that with Hiro. Then from behind, Zero Two appeared and told her that she had done that to Hiro. She asked who Ichigo was kissing. Soon Goro and Hiro came looking for them. In the afternoon, they saw the sunset and wondered what this place actually was. Then Zero Two explained about the abandoned city. That night, they grilled food together while talking. Ichigo welcomed Hiro and Zero Two, officially part of Squad 13. After that, they went to sleep. Ichigo, who hadn't slept yet, saw Hiro, who woke up. Then they walked together along the beach. They looked at the scattered stars, and they chatted. Ichigo wanted to say that she wanted to be with him always, but Hiro cut her off. He noticed and pointed to a shooting star, and Ichigo was amazed to see it. Hiro asked what Ichigo wanted, and Ichigo replied that she had already said that. The scene moved with the 13th troops fighting Kyoryu. The monster sprayed a liquid at the Franks, which penetrated and hit the female pilot's clothes on each Franks. Zorum and Futoshi enjoyed the sight of their partner's clothes slowly melting in the liquid. Hiro and Goro were amazed to see their partners. Then Hiro and Zero Two beat the Kyoryu. After that, Hiro told the others that their clothes were slowly disappeared. Meanwhile, at the base, the boys defended themselves to avoid looking wrong during the incident. Futashi complimented Kokoro on being very pretty. Then Hiro also helped to defend his friends. He said that Parasite had to be a little perverted. Zero Two agreed with Hiro's words. In the bathroom, Miku was very annoyed, and she put up barriers all over the dorm area, but that didn't work with Zero Two. Since the bathroom was in the girls' area, the boys bathed in the river. When eating, the boys limited the dining area so that the girls couldn't eat. Outside, Zero Two and Hiro talked about their stubbornness, and she said she had an idea. The girls were looking for food inside the dormitory and passed through the sealed room door. Then Zero Two appeared, and she was told which side to choose. She chose the girls' side. After that, Zero Two removed the ban on boys going to the bathroom and turned the gender board upside down in the bathroom. Then the boys confidently entered the bathroom because Zero Two had allowed them to. After the bathroom was open, the girls taking a shower looked at the boy who opened the door. They threw things at guys. Hiro saw Zero Two, who was taking their clothes, and she immediately ran away. Hiro then chased her to the roof of the dormitory. After being cornered, Hiro was pelted with the girls' underwear, and then she threw them all at Hiro. In the bathroom, they were still fighting until Nana came, and they were all immediately reprimanded by Nana and Hachi. When in the room, boys thought about girls' feelings and vice versa. But Maiku, who was still annoyed, ran away from the room. The girls couldn't help but turn to the boys for help because Miku was missing. In a sealed room, Miku sat alone and didn't want to come out. She saw a photo in the room, and suddenly she felt scared. Her friends broke down the door and came over to Miku. Hiro immediately took the picture, and Zero Two explained about the photo. 
They were the last 13 troops, and all killed by Kyoryu. Goro invited everyone to understand each other, and they apologized to each other. The next day as Hiro prepared to board Strelizia, he saw Zerom fighting with Meku. Zero Two held her hand to Hiro, and she said she wanted to know more about him. He took Zero Two's hand, turned to Goro, who was watching Ichigo outside. Suddenly, they were summoned because there was a present from Papa or a higher-up person. They each opened their gifts. Zerom then read out a message from Papa. At the same time, Ichigo was peeking at Hiro, who gave Zero Two a mirror as a present. Then Goro approached her. When he saw Ichigo's hairpin, Goro flashed back to their childhood. While in the room, Goro told Hiro that he saw Hiro give a present to Zero Two. Then Goro confided in his feelings that he liked Ichigo. He felt so relieved and comfortable after telling Hiro how he felt. The next day they gathered, and Hachi told them that a Gutenberg-class Kiryu led to plantation, and the 13th troops had to go there immediately. There they saw a very, very large Kiryu. Zorom immediately shot to attack it, but the monster's tentacles caught him and then dropped a bomb at Zorom's franks. After that, he saw the core of the Kiryu and carelessly attacked it again, and he was trapped in the monster's body. Goro immediately saved him, but now Ichigo and Goro were trapped in the body instead. A bay explosion suddenly occurred. Gore just then woke up, and he was alone. Before the explosion occurred, he threw Ichigo and the capsule out. Then he was contacted by Hiro from headquarters and explained Goro's situation. The 13th troops were ordered to retreat to their base to figure out a way to defeat Kyoryu. Ichigo entered angrily to leave Goro alone. Nana and Hechi tried to calm down and explain the situation. Soon they were told to get ready because they were back against the Kyoryu. Before leaving, Ichigo asked to be connected to Goro. Ichigo was furious about what he did, and she said that she would save him. Zero Two told how to fight the Kyoryu. Outside the Franks, Futoshi and Franks Mitsuru were asked to stand guard in the back row. Then Franks Zerome helped Strelizia to jump up and entered Ichigo through the Kyoryu smoke hole. After that, Ichigo dived towards her Franks. In the Franks, Goro looked desperate. He remembered his childhood with Ichigo and Hiro. Ichigo was still trying to get to Goro, but inside, Goro thought it was time to blow himself up and just turn the lever. But suddenly, there was a bright light in front of him, and it was Ichigo who had managed to get into his franks. The two returned to dragging their franks X and left a bomb inside the Kyoryu. They finally managed to get out of the Kyoryu. They immediately moved away, and the bomb exploded until the franks were blown away. <laughs> After that, Goro and Ichigo were seen coming out of their franks, and Goro gave the hair clip he made for Ichigo when he was little. Then he confessed his feelings to Ichigo. Ichigo was very grateful that he had become her partner. The next day in the hot afternoon, the franks were fighting a Kyoryu. They compactly opened a gap to destroy the Kyoryu core, and Hiro was ready to attack as the ultimate attack. But it was seized by Zerom, who destroyed the core. The scene switched to the AP higher-ups observing Troop 13's performance. The higher-ups planned to move them to the next stage. One of the higher-ups suggested before that they gave a reward to Troop 13. Troop 13 had returned to the Frank's base. Their Zeron and Miku were still noisy. Hiro looked at the gloomy Zero Two inside Strelizia. Nana called them all and told them they would be given an award by Papa, which would be held tomorrow. Later, Nana informed Zero Two that she would run a test later. The next day, Troop 13 wore their official uniforms to attend the ceremony. Then they were picked up by Nana and Hachi, and soon they entered the inner city to carry out the ceremony and award ceremony. Once there, they were praised one by one, and after that, they wanted to look around the city for a bit. They looked at the energy source of the plantation. Nana told them that soon they would be home. As the others walked, Zerom ran away from his friends and climbed onto an object. It automatically lifted him. Then Zerone looked at the energy source again. At that time, he didn't even realize that the object he was riding on went back down, and in the end, he couldn't get down. 
Zerone tried to log out, but access was always denied. He was pacing back and forth, looking for people, and finally down through the building wall. As he descended, he heard voices from below. It startled him, and his grip slipped, and he fell. Then he was brought to the house of a woman who was the house under him earlier to be recovered. After Zerome woke up, he talked for a while, and the woman reported to the officer to take Zerome home. But he asked for time to talk to her again, and the woman said yes and took off her mask, which turned out to be Granny. Zerome was fed and watered there, and they talked about her partner. The old woman invited Zerome to see her partner. He was confused because the woman's partner was alive inside the capsule. Suddenly the old woman fell limp and returned to the living room. Zerone told about his partner to the old woman. Because the old woman was very weak, she called the officers. When she approached Zerome, he was seen crying because the old woman was not a stranger to him. The doorbell rang, and the clerk took him back to the hostel. At the dormitory, Miku looked annoyed because Zerome's actions made her worry. Then she punished Zerome by cleaning the bathroom for a week. After Zerome got his punishment, the fight between Zerome and Miku was inevitable. Hiro, who was walking outside, looked at Zero Two's window. Zero Two was looking in the mirror and showing his fangs in his room. Thank you to those who have watched the video until it's finished, and don't forget to like the video if you like it and subscribe. Stay tuned to this channel for other exciting videos.